Matteo, buongiorno. Um, can you can you ciao. Give us, yeah, ciao. can you um, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and why you swim and what 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 swimming is with you? Okay, I am Matteo Stivo, the um, Italian uh, uh, record holder for the two hundred backstroke long course. I was uh, an Olympian in Tokyo, and that's pretty much it. I won the bronze medal in Europeans in back in 2018. I uh, got a couple of um, national titles, uh, and I'm currently uh, trying to be an Olympian again in in Paris this this summer. Um, yeah, I've been swimming all all my life, uh, so uh, and trying to um uh let's say compensate uh my uh short uh, uh short height because i'm not that tall uh, i'm uh one meter point 75 so i i like to to watch two japanese swimmers and learn how to swim properly with a with a very good technique uh, and that's been my main focus uh uh, during my my career, it's, it's been my my focus, and and so that's it. That's that's my my goal to to uh, improve my technique in order to to improve my my best times. And to compensate to compensate with your lack of height, because as you and particularly yeah. being a backstroker, because backstrokers tend to be very tall and very skinny, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I chose the the wrong stroke, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, that, that's pretty much what I do. I, I try to compensate uh, with a good technique. Um, when you first use the EO Swim Better system, when you saw your data, what did you think? What was your first reaction? Well. I, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I was uh, surprised by the amount of data that uh, those tiny devices could collect. Um, I was um, surprised also by the fact that uh, it, it it appears that I um, kind of cross the middle line with my with my hand when I go uh, behind my my head for swim backstroke. Um, so that I'm not uh, that my arms uh, when they uh, go inside the water they're not uh, parallel, you know. Uh, they just cross the the midline somewhere behind my my head, and that result in a uh, in a tiny uh, waste of uh, uh, push, like uh, the direction of my push. Uh, and so that that's a point that uh, it it was difficult to. To notice with videos and and other, let's say, traditional way of uh, analyzing uh, swimmers' technique. So this has been a a, a good a good um, a good insight about my my swim, my technique. So we we tried to um, to put in place all the uh, exercises and all the strategies to avoid this error let's say uh, this mistake so that was that was my first impression uh, that yeah that was pretty much it in a deeper analysis of the data um uh we find we found out that um i kind of rotate my hand uh facing uh downwards so like uh facing not 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 through my feet and so it, it happens more and more when I get tired during a set. Um, so this, uh, alongside with obviously the metabolic uh, fatigue and all the all the other stuff, uh, could uh, explain my uh, yeah my my lower the lowering of my my swimming speed uh, alongside the long sets and uh, hard sets. Let's say uh just because i cannot uh push straight uh facing uh my feet with my hand but i rotate on the on the end of the of the stroke and that was uh another good findings because all the, all the all this data are really um difficult to 
to get and to record in other ways. Because with a video, you can also, if you slow it down, you cannot, um, it's, it's kind of impossible to have a 360 degrees uh, position of your hand uh, in all the axes of, uh, of the space. While if you have, if you have um, your devices on, on your hand, they actually record everything. So this is, this is really helpful to yeah. get really deep in your, in your, in your stroke and in your technique. Do you find, how do you find it to operate? Do you find it easy enough to operate the system? Yes. Uh, overall, overall, um, it's, it's easy. It's, uh, really the user experience is, uh, is pretty good. Um, we, uh, we, no, me, I only had to, um, get into the, into the mechanism of, uh, pressing a uh, double press to, uh, to start recording and double press to stop recording with both the handset outside of the water. I would say 9.5 out of 10. Oh, good. Really good. Ads. <laughs> um, interpreting the data, when you look at all the different data, the, the force field and the stroke um, force and all that stuff, how difficult do you find it to, um, to interpret? Okay, I would say it is... Um, okay, the, the platform is... Um, it's good. It's it's really uh, I, I would say uh, intuitive. I, I don't know if it's not English intuitive, like but it, it's easy. It's easy to it's, uh, it's yeah. easy to navigate. It's it's easy to navigate into the into the data and through all of the um, the fields that um, the device record. Um, it is super helpful the um, the support that that you gave us. Uh, um, explaining all the the single um, aspects of the data that uh, you could focus on uh, and to me and to my team uh, the most interesting thing is that um, our coach can actually collect and see all of our data uh, in the afternoon when he gets when we all when we are all home uh, our coach is um, uh, like do the thing like he, he uh try to analyze all the um the data that he he think he needs uh to analyze in order to improve our our techniques and our perform performance so uh this is this is this is kind of cool that that our coach can actually see whatever we record uh and then provide um a topic where to focus on so the swimmer can both uh by himself like look and check whatever or and uh, and the coach uh, can uh can do that as, as well so because you have a you work within a team or a squad with your coach mm -hmm. and you've got a number of olympians and i think paralympians as well within that squad yes and so you're using he's using the team function so he can as you say he's got visibility for all of the swimmers and all of the data um so you, you does he then help you with drills so you analyze the data and work out what you can make some changes and then does he give you yes. to, do to, to try and make those changes yes yes that that's what we do uh we have uh let's say a uh, main uh, training session on the uh, afternoon. Uh, but we have also a uh, training session in the mornings. Uh, and usually in those uh, morning session, we, we try to um, put in place some drills, some exercise, some small movements that could uh, help improving uh, both, uh, let's say, uh, errors that we know we have uh, since uh, since day one, uh, and both uh, errors that we found out with your device. Cool. Um, and uh, of all the charts, is there one in particular that you spend most time looking at? Is there which one would you say is the most important one for you? I think the graph uh, that puts uh, force versus uh, time. Uh, time. 
Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I would say because it is um, a super easy um, uh, graph to understand. Uh, and it, it, it shows uh, for every, uh, not second, but tens of a seconds or even uh, cents of a second, 50th, 50th where your points. hand is. Yeah. Every 50th. Okay. 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 Uh, like how, like how much is the force, uh, you are applying in that moment of the stroke. So, uh, when you look at the, at the curve and you see that it's not actually a perfect, let's say, um, reverse, uh, V, uh, reverse V shaped, but it has like, it goes like an M then you understand that in that point at that specific, specific moment, your, your hand is not, uh, pushing uh, for some reason. And that, that's, that's something that changes everything. And so you can understand in which exact, uh, moment your hand is not, uh, applying the right force or is losing force. And it's something that changes everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and you did right. And that is, it's the heart of the system is the, the force versus time. And everything comes from the data from the force versus time. And the, the force field is really important because that summarizes the force versus time. Yeah, that summarizes everything. Yeah, that, that's also I, I would I would say that is the second the second most important and the, the most useful for for an everyday use. Let's say. Okay. Last question for you, Matteo. Um, would you recommend it to other swimmers, triathletes, professionals, serious? What What do you think? Yes, uh, of course, I would I would recommend it, and and I'm actually recommending it. <laughs> so, um, yes, I think it it is useful uh, for a really wide range of of swimmers because it can helps help visualize something that is really hard to to understand. Because, um, let's say. Pro athletes, pro swimmers are really good in know in knowing where their hand are uh, in each specific moment. So we are actually good at it, also without the device. But with the device, you can turn it uh, like to pro level and let's say um, uh, end times a better uh, knowledge of your your path of of uh, swimming, your your hand position and and whatever the the app helps you um finding out all those things while non-professional swimmers are uh pretty bad in uh in self-consciousness of of movement and and those kind of uh of, of knowledge of movements in the water and so open it open uh, your data on your on your phone let's say just going out from the from the swimming for two minutes, having the opportunity to watch uh, what you were doing uh, while swimming, is like uh, changes your mind. Like it opens your your eyes into uh, something that it's really really hard to to understand and to figure out. Like while if you have the opportunity to see it yourself, to watch uh, what you are doing in each specific moment. It's something that I think it's it's really powerful. Uh, it's a it's a really powerful insight uh, to improve.